Hi everybody, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Welcome to TCM. Success stories in Hollywood run the gamut. Some talent is meticulously crafted by industry experts, while others are established after years of exhaustive personal dedication and hard work. And then some simply shoot right to the top, their talent fully formed, their cinematic sense of self nearly complete. Such was the case with the stunning directorial debut of Terrence Malick, which we have coming up next. From 1973, it's Badlands. Malick was relatively new to the movie business, just 29 years old when Badlands hit theaters. He was a philosophy professor turned journalist turned screenwriter. He decided the best way to make the movies he wanted to make was to avoid the Hollywood studio system entirely. And so Malick didn't just direct and write Badlands, he also produced it, doing it for under $350,000. Not a lot of money to spend on a movie even in the 1970s. Yet, Badlands was immediately hailed by many as an instant masterpiece. First of all, it's quite something to look at, exposing the audience to a part of the country seldom seen on screen. Secondly, it's a story told with confidence and self-assurance, a twisted take on the power of love, violence, and fame, perhaps most of all notoriety. Badlands is the story of two young lovers who go on a Midwestern killing spree after the girl's father tries to put an end to their romance. It's based on the true crime story of teenagers Charles Starkweather and Carol Ann Fugate, aged 19 and 14, respectively. They killed 10 people over the course of nine days in Nebraska and Wyoming in 1958. Martin Sheen and Sissy Spacek play the couple renamed Kit and Holly in Malick's story, and both received jolts to their nascent careers thanks to their exceptional performances. Sheen nails the wannabe James Dean's dangerous rebel swagger, while Spacek exudes a sublime awkwardness that's at once endearing and simultaneously a bit creepy. From 1973, also with Warren Oates, here's Terrence Malick's Badlands. <laughs> 